All right, guys, we are back in my garage for another video, and today we are going to be talking about Bimmer Code. And again, this video is sponsored by Bimmer Code, so I want to give a huge shout out to them for sponsoring this video. The Bimmer Code app is a really nice, simple, and easy way to do coding on your BMWs. If all any of you guys have any experience with BMWs, then you know generally these cars come with all of the features available, just a lot of checkboxes are unchecked. So if you have a car that's lightly optioned, you can basically use a coding tool like Bimmer Code to check those boxes and turn those features back on. So you basically just get free upgrades for your vehicle. So this is a really cool tool to have. I'm actually going to use it on my 2016 340i. If you have an older vehicle, you'll probably have less options. And if you have a newer vehicle, I can almost guarantee you'll have more. So definitely go download it and check it out to see what options are available for your car. In this video, we're going to try to do a deep dive and show everything that's available on my car to give you guys an idea of everything that you can adjust and change. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. And again, a huge shout out to Bimmer Code for sponsoring. Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. So like I said, Bimmer Code is a coding tool for BMWs. If you guys have done coding in the past, you probably have used a laptop with software like NCS Expert or ESYS. And so this is a way that you basically don't need a laptop. You can just code things straight from your phone. So it's a really nice, cool and easy app to use instead of needing to know all of the German terminology and going into the app and knowing what numbers to change or what words to type in. This just gives you checkboxes so you can turn things on and off with simple menus. And that way you can code your car with a lot less risk to actually damaging something electrical in your vehicle. So it's a really simple interface and we're going to connect to it with a couple things. So the first thing that you're going to need is the app. So you can download that in the app store for your device, whether it's an iPhone or an Android. And you're also going to need an OBD adapter. I recommend the MHD universal adapter. That's what I use on my car. It works with all vehicles, E series, F series, and G series. And it'll automatically set up your car to work for a lot of different tools as well. So I think it's one of the best options available on the market. I'll have a link in the description if you guys want to buy one. Now, when you're setting this up on your car, generally you're just going to want to basically put it in accessory mode. However, on newer G-Series cars, you need to put it in the diagnostic mode. So the way that you do that is you press the start button three times without pushing the brake pedal, and then that will put your car into the diagnostic mode. Also, if you have third-party CAN communication devices like JB4, flex fuel kits, anything that's communicating over CAN, you're going to want to disconnect or disable that before coding the car because that can interfere with some of the communication. I actually have a flex fuel kit on my car and it would randomly like kick it off from the connection and I would lose connection with the car. So if you want a good stable connection, turn that off before you actually start coding it. It also might need an update. In my case, I did. If you're connected to a Wi-Fi adapter, of course, you're going to need to disconnect the Wi-Fi adapter in order to do that update and then just reconnect. So don't sit there stuck for a while wondering what's wrong like I did because it's not going to connect to Wi-Fi through your OBD adapter. Just go ahead and connect to a home network or, you know, your 4G, 5G network if that's what you have. Now, at this point, you're going to go ahead and select your vehicle. It gives you a couple different options. So in my case, I'm working with a 3 Series and then Bimmer Code will begin to scan your car to identify what modules are available. If you have an older car, you'll most likely have less. If you have a newer car, you'll most likely have more. And it even varies depending on the options on your car. So not everybody has everything available. But this is what I basically have available on mine. And we're just going to kind of go through and see what these different options can do. So first things first, on the top right, you can click to see some of your vehicle information. It gives you your chassis code as well as all the options on your car. So if you guys have used a VIN decoder, you've probably seen this in the past but it just shows you everything that's available on your car. It also shows some of the eye level information so you can see the software level on your car. It looks like mine has never been updated, but you know, if you're wondering if an update is applicable to you, then you can go through that information to see 
what software is currently on your car. So then you're going to go ahead and scroll through the list to identify the module you want to update. When you start updating it, it will automatically create a backup. You can also manually do it. This is really important because if for any reason you lose connection or just send bad data to the car and it messes up the module, that backup is something that you can flash to recover it and prevent it from, you know, just completely being broken. So make sure you have that backup saved on your device. Also in expert mode, it gives you more of the functionality you would get from software like ESIS, for example. So if you want to set custom settings to any of those modules, then you can go into expert mode. Just keep in mind, it's going to be a little bit more risky if you don't know what you're doing. And then after that, of course, you just hit the option that you want, select code, and then it will go through and begin loading up the new coding to your car. And if you ever want to recover a backup, then you just click on the top right, and that gives you the option to recover the backup file for the module that you're trying to modify. So let's go through the options that I have. The first one is active sound design, and that is just related to the fake engine noise that's coming in your speakers. This can actually be updated to specific vehicles. If you guys look that up online, you can see that there are sounds for you know M3s, M4s, M5s. You can basically change it if you want to. But in my case, I just kind of keep it turned off because I have an exhaust on my car. Sounds good to me, so I don't need any fake engine noise coming through the speakers. Then you can go to the advanced crash safety module, and this gives you some options primarily for your seat belts. On my car, I actually have options for both front seats and both rear seats. I don't know if the rear seat ones work, but I kind of messed with those a little bit. And it'll basically change whether you get an indicator on the dash. It'll also change if you get a reminder that's basically like that dinging sound where it's constantly reminding you to put on your seatbelt. And you can also set the speed for the reminder. So if you're just driving slowly, it won't do anything. But if you get above a certain speed threshold, then it'll start making that noise to remind you to put on your seatbelt. The next module is air conditioning, and this kind of sets the memory settings for your AC. So if you want it to remember the settings every time you get in your car, you can select which ones you want it to remember, and that way it'll work and turn on. And you can also set the display color change, which I actually just found out is a thing. Some people do not like the orange, I guess. So I'm used to it just changing orange when you turn on your headlights. But if you don't like it looking orange, then you can disable this. And when your headlights turn on, it will keep the climate control display in white. So something there for you guys that don't like that. The next one is electronic transmission, and this allows you to enable sport auto. I believe this is basically for people with the base package vehicles. So if you don't have the M Sport package or any kind of sport package on your car and it didn't come with sport auto, then you can enable it here. Now, the next is the FEM or the front electronic module, and this is where majority of the changes that people want to do is stored. So in here, you can control the ambient lighting. You can set the brightness as well as set how the brightness is compared to the instrument cluster. So, you know, you have that little knob where you can make the brightness higher or lower. And normally they're synced together. But if you want the ambient lights always to be bright, but you want to be able to dim the instrument cluster lights or vice versa, then you can separate those two controls here. Also, the angel eye brightness is in here, which I haven't had a lot of luck with that working. I think it's primarily for pre-LCI cars. So if you have LCI headlights with the LED icons or laser lights. I don't think this fully works, but feel free to try it out and see for yourself. You can also set it to turn off the iDrive when you open your door, which is one of the most annoying things about BMWs. Of course, we have the two handle pull to unlock the door and then actually open it. But then after that, the car stays on. It doesn't actually shut off the electronics until I think until you lock it. But this way, it'll automatically turn off the car when you open the door, so you're not worried about trying to remember to press the start button again and things like that. Like when I come home, I don't lock my car in my garage, so I can start walking in the house and realize like I still hear the radio playing or something because I didn't press the stop button twice when I got out of it. So this just makes sure it turns off automatically. You can also set the auto start stop if you want it to be off, on, or if you want it to be on memory mode. Most of the newer cars come default with the memory mode, like my 2018 440i. It remembers the auto start stop setting when I get into the car, but on my 2016, I had to turn that on so that it'll remember what the button uh, choice was when I get back in. You can also do battery coding, and in my Bimmer Link video, I talked a little bit about this, where registering a battery is basically done when you put in a new battery, 
coating is done when you put in a different battery to what the car came with. So you really shouldn't have to use this unless you are changing the size of the battery that you are putting in your car. So don't mistake this for something that you need to set or do every time you replace your battery if you're using the exact same one. Then you can also change the brake force display. This requires other modules to be changed as well. But this just kind of adds that emergency signal for when you push the brakes really hard. It gives you the extra brightness and sometimes flashes the lights. You also have comfort opening and closing, which for whatever reason, our cars come with comfort opening with the remote, but it does not come with comfort closing with the remote. So if you long press the lock button, nothing happens after the windows are opened. So you can basically turn that on so you can not just open it, but you can also close it and you can set the delay, which is extremely helpful. If you're like me, you don't like the way that the sunroof opens when you do comfort opening. So I only want the windows to open. And if that delay is too short, then as soon as the windows are open, it'll start opening the sunroof as well. And so I like to have that delay so I have a little bit more time to make sure that the windows are fully open without opening the sunroof. And it's the same thing with the clothes. If you like to pop your sunroof up in the summer and let some air vent out, you can have that delay turned on. So when you long press the lock button, you can close all the windows, but still leave the sunroof popped up so that it can vent some of the hot air. You can also change things like the DRL if you want it to be on and bright with the parking light. So you can adjust all of those settings. You can also set whether you want the horn signal to basically go off if you try to lock the car with the engine running. I've had that happen before, but it's pretty rare and I can't actually remember the scenario, so it doesn't bother me. But maybe you're somebody that commonly leaves your car running, but you lock it like if you're going in a gas station or something. So if you don't want it to honk or make any noise, then you can disable that here. You can also disable the window lifter interruption when you're opening your door. This is primarily for protection from pinches. So if you have your fingers in the doorway and you close the door with the door open, then you could mistakenly like close your fingers in the door or something like that. This is particularly annoying because if you have like a 440i, for example, it has frameless windows. So there's nothing to pinch if the door is open and you're rolling up the windows. But just in general, I don't like it. I want the car to be able to roll up the windows when I want. Or if I'm rolling up the windows and I open the door, I don't want it to suddenly stop rolling up the windows. So I turn that off. You can also set the car to unlock the door when the car is off. So that way you can avoid that double pull to unlock it and then open the door. It'll just automatically unlock it when the car is turned off. And you can also set the time for automatic lock. So if you unlock your car but never open the doors, it will relock the car after a certain period of time. I think the default's either like one or two minutes. Headlight washers is also an option. I don't have them on my car, so I don't mess with this. But you can kind of control how much water is pushed out, how many times it pulses, and all of the different settings with how the headlight washers operate. You can also set the LED conversion for each light. So every single turn signal, reverse light, front, rear, side, all of the lights, you can individually set which ones have an LED conversion. You can also enable the cornering lights with your fogs, which doesn't bother me, but I guess it bothers a lot of people. If you're coming around a turn and it's at night, one of the fog lights will turn on to try to put more light on the corner of the street. So if there's a curb or something there, you can see it a little bit better. But some people just really hate when only one fog light turns on at a time. So they like to disable that. And on the other hand, if you delete your fog lights, then you can actually deactivate them here as well. So you can basically set that here and you won't get errors for no fog lights being plugged in. The hazard warning after emergency braking, you can enable or disable that. So if you slam on your brakes, it'll automatically turn on the hazards if you have this enabled. And then you also have the option for the door handle lights when you go in reverse. A lot of people don't like this, but if you have the top view cameras, it is extremely useful at night because it lights up the ground. So those side view cameras have a better view of what you're driving next to. So if you're parallel parking or whatever, it can be extremely hard to see the curbs at night. And having that extra light from your door handle puddle lights will just make it easier for the side view cameras to pick it up. You can also change the sensitivity for your rain light sensors. So if you want that to increase or decrease sensitivity so that it's going to turn on faster with different amounts of rain, then you can adjust that. You can also adjust when you want your fog lights on. So if you want them on with parking lights or with high beams, it's nice just to have that enabled because especially in the U.S., it's not set like that from the factory. So you can basically turn that on and your fog lights won't automatically turn off when you change your lights to high beams. You can also change when your folding mirrors open and close. So most people like for them to close automatically when they lock the car. 
and open automatically when they unlock the car. So this is the option for that. And you can also adjust the mirror tilt, which again, I'm just learning about when I see this. A lot of people like to enable or disable it from inside the car just by switching, you know, your mirror switch. But you can also adjust how much it actually tilts. So the default on mine was 70%, but you can change that more or less if you want it to tilt a specific amount. Here you also have an option for your steering wheel paddles. So if you retrofitted a steering wheel with paddles and your car didn't come with it, then you can turn this on and that will help the paddles to work. You can also adjust the heated seat temperature. So if you want it to be hotter or colder, if you want the top to be hot and the bottom to be colder, or vice versa, you can basically set all of those settings so that it heats you up to your exact comfort. Then you can also turn on the memory for your heated steering wheel. So if you turn off your car with the heated steering wheel on, it will also be on the next time you get back in your car. There's also the boot lid opening delay. And this is something that can be extremely annoying if you guys have had your F-Series for any amount of time. You'll notice that your boot lid randomly opens and it just seems like the button is super sensitive. So this is a nice feature where you can extend how long you need to have that button depressed in order for the boot lid to open. So it'll be less likely for it to get pushed in your pocket or something where the trunk will just pop open and you might not mean for that to happen. You can also turn on or off the side markers and adjust their brightness. I just turn those off because they're ugly. You can also adjust the welcome light so you can turn them on or off. You can set the brightness, you can set the duration for how long they're on. You can also set them if you want them only to turn on in darkness. So it will use the light sensor to determine whether you need to turn on the welcome lights or not. And you can also determine which lights are going to turn on with your DRLs and your parking lights. You can enable and disable those. And then the last one is for window washing. So you can basically turn it on or off, how many wipes you want it to do. And you can also set for the rear wiper to turn on when you put the car in reverse. So if you have a hatch, you can also set that. So when it's raining, the wiper will automatically keep wiping to make sure it's clear and you have good visibility. All right, we're almost halfway through. So the next thing that you can adjust is the head unit. This has a lot of different features as well. Most of them you can actually adjust in your iDrive settings, but some of them aren't visible. So this just gives you the option to adjust those settings. First one is the acoustic lock confirmation. So I actually have this in my iDrive already, but it gives you another way to turn that on or off when you're locking and unlocking the car. You can also adjust the warning chime. So if you want the warning chime or the ringtone to have a different sound, there are basically two different options. I just leave them at the default BMW one. You can also set the max radio volume when you turn on the car. So if you were blasting the radio when you got to the party, but you don't want it blasting on your way home with a hangover, you can go ahead and turn that down so when you turn on your car, it won't be blasting. You can also set the DRL checkbox. I believe this actually adds the checkbox to turn DRLs on or off. But again, on my car, that was already an option. And then there are a couple other things that you can change. So like for the start animation, there are a couple different options. All of them don't work on all vehicles, but I did try them all on my car. So we'll take a look at a couple. The first one is Alpina. There's also BMW i. Then there's also Connect Drive. There's M Variant 1. There's also one for Mini. And there's one for Rolls Royce. Now there are a couple other options as you can see, but none of them worked. They just kind of showed the default connect drive animation. So you'll kind of have to play with them to see which ones are available to you or not. Different cars will have different options that work. But for me, I just stuck with the M variant one. I think it's the best looking one. Then you can set the volume pop up. So when you actually turn the dial on your volume knob, it'll basically put the pop up so you can see where the volume is set. So you can turn that pop up on or off. The TPMS values is extremely useful because you can actually change it from just a green, yellow and red indicator to actually showing you the tire pressure as well as the tire temperature. 
So it's just really nice to have that, especially in the winter or the summer as temperatures are changing. You can see really quickly if you need to add some air or remove some air to keep it in the safe range. Rear view camera zoom, I've literally never messed with this, but it's an option on mine. It's just on the default setting. Display full text messages is a nice option if you have the office settings on your iDrive so you can see the full text messages and know to respond to it. Service history is also an option that's available so you can have that shown in your iDrive. Sport mode, if you don't have that from the factory, then this will enable it so that you can have sport mode. And it also offers the sports display, so you can turn that on and set the color if you want it to be red or orange. So this is, again, mostly for people with base package vehicles. If you don't have M-Sport or any sport packages, then you might not have those options from the factory. There are also video options, which I never mess with. It wasn't fully working on my car, but if you want to have video in motion or anything like that, then you can adjust those options. And then we disable all of the warnings. So the one at startup where it makes you confirm that you're only going to use it in a safe environment. Who cares? The camera warnings every time you go into reverse and your reverse camera comes up again, it tells you watch your surroundings. Who cares? And if you have night vision, it also gives a warning when you turn that on. So disable all of those. We know how to drive and that just wastes time having to hit confirm every time. Next, we can adjust our instrument clusters. So there's an option to add digital speed to the scrolling options at the bottom of your instrument cluster. So if you want to add that, you can turn it on or off. For the date, you can turn that on or off. And you can also turn on the empty menu item that comes from the factory where basically when you scroll all the way through, then there's one that just leaves it blank. If you guys like it blank or you just like having that indicator to know when you're back to the start of the menu when you're scrolling through the options, you can leave that on. Or if you think that's just taking up extra space, then you can turn that off. You can also enable the M Performance logo. So I actually have that logo in my cluster, but this was only working on my 6WA. I tried that on the 6WB cluster that I have in the 440i and it didn't work. Again, a lot of these things might or might not work depending on your options. So it's worth just trying it. And if it doesn't work, you can turn it back off. You can also set the average value reset time. So if you want it to be one hour, four hours, 24 hours, or every time you turn off the car, you can basically set that for the assumptions. And you can also adjust the fuel consumption max display, which I've never had to mess with, but that's a feature there. You can also enable Sport Plus. So if you want to enable that, then you can select that setting. And then you can adjust when you get the low fuel and critical fuel warning. So the low fuel warning is the one where the, basically the indicator comes up on the instrument cluster. It gives you a warning and then it goes away. The critical warning is when it's constantly up there and you cannot make it go away. So I think by default, 50 miles is the low fuel and 30 miles is the critical fuel. That's what I set mine to. The next option you have is ICM. I actually don't have the options for active cruise control or blind spot monitoring, but that's where you can find options on how you can adjust that. And then there's also the second feature that you need to turn on to enable Sport Plus. So you need to go into both of those areas if you want Sport Plus enabled. Then closing things out, we also have the rear electronic module. This also gives you an option to enable the brake force display. Then you also have the DRL settings for your taillights. So if you want your taillights to be on with the front DRLs, you can enable that. You can also set LED taillight conversions. You can also set the PDC settings for speed activation and roll activation, as well as the rear camera speed and distance threshold. So basically when you're reversing your cars, you know, you have all the indicators and everything on there. You make sure that you set the actual speed and distance thresholds for when those will show, as well as how long the rear view camera can turn on. And here it actually disables it at a certain speed. But I think in expert mode, there's even a way where you can set it to always work. So if you're driving on the highway, you can turn on your rear view camera if you wanted to. And then there's the LCI taillight retrofit, which if you have a 340i, not really a concern, but some of the 440i guys have the pre-LCI lights. So if you retrofit an LCI taillight, then this is the option that you would select to enable that. It doesn't necessarily mean that you don't need the adapter harness to plug it in, though. So still get the harness and any other adapters that you need for the lights to work. This just sets it up so that the car can control it without throwing any faults. For the roof function center, you can adjust the lock and unlock confirmation volume. So if you do have the noise that sounds when you lock and unlock the car, this determines how loud it should be. And you can also set the alarm sound. There are actually three different versions here. So there is the US version. There's the Euro version. And then there's the Great Britain version.
So I just left mine on the regular one that came with my car. Um, you know, you can hear there's differences. Some of them have lights flashing, some don't. So you can kind of pick which one you prefer. And then the last one is the seat module. And this gives you a couple options for the seat heating memory. So again, if you wanted to save the memory for 15 minutes, 24 hours or forever, you can set that here. And if you leave the heated seats on when you turn off the car, then it will be back on if you're within that limit. And you can also set the easy entry. I actually have that enabled on the 440i, but not on the 340i. Just kind of depends on your preference, but this pushes the memory seat back a little bit so that it's easier to get into the car. And then when you close the door, the seat moves back forward into your driving position. So yeah, sorry this video got pretty long. I just kind of wanted to give a thorough overview of everything that's available with Bimmer Code. Again, a huge shout out to them for sponsoring this video. I've used it on the 340i already, and it just makes it much more convenient and easy to use with a lot of these features enabled. So check it out. I'll have a link down in the description, or you can search for it in the App Store on your phone and download it to try it on your car. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below. So it's really nice and easy to use instead of having to know the actual German technology, <clears throat> instead of needing to know all the German tem oh. instead of having to use all of the German tem